Hey guys, this is the YouTube version uh, of my show. I don't love the idea of even putting it out like this, but I'm going to use YouTube to stay in touch with you guys from now on. That means this version is missing all the stories about coronavirus, insurrection, your Second Amendment rights, and more. All of these, of course, are usually my most honest, brutal, and important stories. Anyway, you can uh, get the entire unfiltered and uncensored show for free by going to thecomicsgym.com or nickdip.com. It's still free on both of these sites, too. Uh, and if you want extra content each day, join at patreon.com or thecomicsgym.com for the daily Encore show. Also, while you're uh, on these sites, please make a contribution to keep this show free and check out my tour dates. I'll be in Phoenix, uh, Raleigh, New York, and Texas in the up and coming months. Remember, uh, you guys keep thinking it, I'll keep saying it, and please enjoy and please share today's episode. Talk to you soon. Please welcome Lady Gaga and Liza Minnelli. We got the wrong cards. Chris rocks. Oh, Jada jokes. Don't read those. Don't read. Everyone those. loves jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. It says Jada Pickett's pussy smells so bad it melted the hair off her head. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Scared me, you can't even keep another man's balls out of Jada's mouth. <laughs> name out your fucking mouth. Do what he says, security sucks at this event. Mm, I'll, I'll handle it. Uh, would you like me to read the winner now? Yes. Everyone who fucked Jada. <laughs> Oh yeah, welcome to the show. On a dirty Tuesday, how are you folks? That was uh, Kyle Dunnigan's little piece. He's a very funny comic. He uh, used to be at the Comedy Cellar all the time. And um, he's, he's starting to make a name for himself, putting these things together. He does an unbelievable Alec Baldwin impression and Frank Stallone. He's always on, I think, Kurt Metzger's uh, pie. And Joe Rogan sort of caught on to him, which she will you know, Anytime you can get that kind of exposure. So, but he's, he's really funny at that. That, God damn it, that made me laugh. It made me laugh so goddamn hard. It's just, it's just, it's refreshing because he's basically calling Will Smith a douchebag and her too. And it's just, didn't you find it refreshing? Didn't you? Sure you did. Admit it. Uh, 45. Uh, I sound like her. I'll take care of it. Excuse me. Pardon me. Anyhow, speaking of that, leading into it real quick up front, <laughs> apparently this story won't go away. And people, I mean, to the point where not only talking about it, how about getting tattoos of the slap? Have you ever heard? You think we're a media-driven country at all? People are turning the moment Will Smith slapped Chris Rock into a permanent memory with tattoos. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to get one of the Kennedy assassination on my ass. Is it too late? Tattoo artist John Arton found it hilarious when someone asked to get the infamous outburst tattooed on his leg recently. Uh-oh. Retard yeah, alert. I agree. Retard alert. Who's that going to impress? <laughs> this is, uh, I'll do an impression of somebody with that tattoo uh, on a first date. Yeah. Look what I got on my calf. Remember that happened like four minutes ago? Hey, where you going, you bitch? Is that John Arton? That's John Arton. Look at John. <laughs> Is he a blind tattoo artist? <laughs> that's, that's not a shirt, by the way. That's a tattoo he did. 
fucking terrific, this kid. I thought, John Arton said, I thought, let's do it. It's hilarious. <laughs> what are you going to say, no? I'm sure there was some money involved. Uh, not like you're killing it. <laughs> he says, let's do it. It's hilarious. The Birmingham tattoo artist uh, told SWNS, it's quite small and discreet. If it wasn't, I probably wouldn't have done it. Liar, 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 pants on dirty tattoo fire. What are you talking about? If it, if it was huge, you could have charged 1500 What are you talking about? What a silly thing. It's like me getting shemp, getting poked in the eyes on my neck. To fucking mo, give him the old. Arton spoke to a British radio station, Heart, about the tattoo for a segment on the weirdest thing he has been asked to do at work. Having been a tattoo artist for three years and specializing in hyper-realistic portraits, is that what you call that word? Arton said he was happy to oblige. Oscar Aglia Jr. shared a video on his Instagram of the finished product, which has been reposted, of course, to TikTok, with nearly 15,000 views, 14,000 on by um, Chinese military. <laughs> Commenters were quick to call the tattoo <laughs> unnecessary, childish, and uh, so dumb. <laughs> Well, let's see what we got here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? That could be Martin Luther King Jr. slapping <laughs> Flip Wilson at a roast. <laughs> that could be, I don't know, Cedric the Entertainer punching Martin Lawrence. It's fucking hilarious. And you know what? I want to see black guys get this because you can't... <laughs> As Otto and George said, the puppet, the dirty, remember my, Otto and George, my buddy, yeah, oh, black guys get tattoos. You can't even see. <laughs> it's like decorating a chocolate cake with dog shit. <laughs> well, celebrities, um, it says am. What's it say? Well, celebrities what? And Americans. Oh. It's A-M here. I see. While well, celebrities and, um, oh, Americans divided uh, about the out-of-the-blue moment. They divided about the actual slap thing. This is how you know we're doomed as a species. That, that, that's up for debate whether what he did was wrong or right. That shows you how fucking far people have gone as far as pissing on the First Amendment in this country, especially millennials. There's been plenty of polls. You're not big free speech. For, how the fuck, why would you debate violence because somebody said some, I mean, why would you agree that, you know, there's nothing wrong with that? What the fuck? Uh, so, uh, again, the people that are saying um, Will Smith did the right thing, in their words, again, and you know this is how the left's been thinking before, do you? Words. Every bit, no difference between that and actually they think words are more poison than actions. It's just the most retarded train. Shows what pussies you are, what thin skin fucking babies. Ugh, we're finished. Never been more happy to be 60. Uh, so yeah, Americans are divided out of the blue moment. Art and said he feels, and he's a nitwit. See, he's part of that generation. Uh, the artist says he feels there's no right and wrong. <laughs> the fuck are you talking? Really? So I'm going to come in for a tattoo, right? About halfway through it, like when you were slouched over putting it on my thigh, and I, I don't like it, I'm just going to drop an elbow on the back of your head, knock you unconscious. No right or wrong. Huh? No right or wrong. This, no, don't judge people's behavior. That's why we're in the shithole we are. That nobody, I've been saying this on stage since my fifth year, nobody judges anybody, especially people on the left. You can't judge anybody's behavior unless it's a white Christian male. And then you can say whatever the fuck you want, but live and let live. Yeah, yeah, it sounds nice. Putin, you know, that's what he's doing right now. It's his idea of fucking, you know. Uh, anyways, it's a weird, interesting, and crazy thing, he says. I don't think there's a right or wrong side. I didn't meant to spend this much time on this. But uh, <laughs> it's just an interesting thing some celebrities have done, Art and said. What does he mean? The, the, the slap fight is the, an interesting thing? Yeah, I guess what he's referring to. I don't know. What else? Anyways, let's move on to another nitwit. Hunter and his gatherers. Hey, that's pretty clever, Nick. I know. I told you, you should be writing for the Post. A witness who testified before the Hunter Biden, this is interesting, grand jury, 
was asked to identify the big guy in the First Sun's uh, planned deal with a Chinese energy conglomerate. And Hunter said, they were talking about, obviously, my member, my sexual. Uh, as calls ramped up to have President Biden included in a conspiracy probe. <laughs> yeah, I like to see it happen. Do you guys really think Biden, anybody's going to jail? Haven't we learned for the last 10 years? Hillary's still out there giving advice in public. She should be getting <laughs> by a fucking he, she in a woman's prison. Somebody that looks like Leah Thomas with a fucking... The question arose after the witness was shown a piece of evidence while appearing in secret before the panel uh, in Wilmington, Delaware, a source familiar with the proceedings told Nick DiPaolo in the Post. A bombshell email exclusively reported by the Post in October 2020 showed that one of Hunter Biden's business partners, James Gillar, outlined the proposed percentage distribution of equity in a company created for a, jo a joint venture uh, with CEFC, that's a Chinese energy company. So he was right in the middle of this. Biden Hunter Biden. The March 13, 2017 plan included 10 held for the big guy. What are we supposed to believe? Inches? Come on. 10 held for the big... It says, sorry, held by H for the big guy. Gee, who would H be? I, Henny Youngman, huh? Helen Keller, Howard Stern... Come on! <laughs> Hank Aaron, <laughs> Helmut Schmidt, who's that? I don't know. <laughs> 10 hell for the big guy. We all know the big guy is the fucking Biden, Joe Biden. Another former Hunter Biden partner. By the way, this is the story that the uh, you know, mainstream media buried right before the election. And we know, we, we know that it was <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you say. But if you want to pretend it wasn't, um, Trump lost by a and 10% of people, uh, Democrats who voted for Biden, actually have said in polls they wouldn't have if they knew about this. Well, take for Another former Hunter Biden partner, U.S. Navy veteran, this guy, Tony Bobulinski. I wonder why he sort of went away. Remember, a year ago he was on every show? Uh, he later revealed that the, the big guy was Hunter's dad, then uh, the Democratic candidate for president saying, I have heard Joe Biden say he has never discussed his dealings with uh, Hunter. I'm innocent. He's lying. <laughs> and Tony here, doing a Pete Rose impression, said uh, that was false. Hunter Biden disclosed he was under investigation for his tax affairs shortly after his dad was elected over former President Donald Trump <laughs> in the 2020 election. But the probe broadened to include potential money laundering and the violation of lobbying laws, according to recent reports. But Hunter is just, uh, you know, he didn't do any of that shit. Oh, no, you ain't. I'm like everybody says, like, dumb, I'm smart, and I want the stats. <laughs> stop, stop jerking off on TikTok and smoking crack. If you want respect. In the wake of last week's report by the WAPO Washington Post, which confirmed 4.8 million in payments from CEFC, that's a Chinese energy company, to entities controlled by who? Hunter Biden and first brother James Biden during the 2017 and 2018. The White House on Sunday attempted to distance the president. This is, can you imagine having this job? Oh my God. From his uh, under scrutiny kin. And I'm going to say it again, being the cynical dick I am. They'll do it. We'll go through this whole song and dance. Nobody will go to jail. Hunter might have to, I don't know, pick up trash by the highway for 10 minutes. <laughs> Joe will be wheeled off in a fucking, you know, a baby stroller shitting himself. No one's going to. It's. It, ugh, I can't take it. Why? Because they're <sighs> Democrats. White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain uh, said this on, uh, on one of those Sunday morning shows. Uh, let's roll this, Mama Luke. Of course the president's confident that his son didn't break the law. Uh, but most importantly, as I said, that's a matter that's going to be decided by the Justice Department, by the legal process. It's something that no one at the White House has involvement in. You're lying. And you're a piece of shit. <laughs> can you imagine? He can't even keep a straight face. Can you imagine having to go out? They really do. It's just part of the job. When I was little, I always heard, even when I was young, and I heard politicians are all full of shit, you're like, well, I don't know, there's a couple, no. They're fucking rotten. 
to the core. Ugh. Except for Trump. You know what? He's not a politician. He's a businessman, which is what this country is. It's a corporation. So put a CEO in there with blonde hair and blue eyes, alpha male, who's eating a supermodel's ass every night. A winner. I don't know. I got some pussy. She let me grab it at a party. A pussy like probably the greatest pussy ever. You know what? What you know what? Mar Marla Maples was uh, Trump's ex. I saw her in person. To this day, still the hottest woman I ever saw in my life in person. And she wasn't like a spring chick at this point. I don't know why I was at some luncheon in New York. But I don't know. If, I, I, she was getting into a cat. I fucking. I, I almost fainted. How strikingly. And she said. She said Trump was the best sex you ever. Had. <laughs> that big mushroom head on his dick. I don't know. Looks like something out of a Tom Petty video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Klain went on to say, this dink. But again, I want to just be really clear. These actions by Hunter and his brother, <laughs> Klain told ABC's midget Stepanopoulos, they're private matters. They don't involve the president, and they're certainly are something that no one at the White House is involved in. He wanted to stress that. Hey, no, shut up! Really? Hey, no. Really, really, really. Are you fucking kidding me? The Biden family is like, you know, one of the five families, the fucking Lucchesis. <laughs> the, the dumb son, the Fredo fucking it all up. <laughs> but the Chinese offered me a deal, Joe. <laughs> they said there was something in it for me, Dad. There was something in it for me. <laughs> they said you was being tough on the negotiations at Bur Burisma. And Come on, man, you bought that story? <laughs> Former federal law enforcement officials dismissed those claims with one ex-Fed even saying there's already enough evidence to build a conspiracy case. This is an ex-law enforcement guy, they know. He says, I get, there, I get that there's spin, but this is not a complex one. Former Utah U.S. Attorney Brett Tolman told the Post. Tolman said Bubba Linsky's confirmation that President Biden was the big guy and a proposed 2017 deal with CEFC China Energy could be considered evidence that other family members were involved. Tony Bobolinsky, you see how we haven't seen him? He was there. He saw Joe Biden at the goddamn meeting. Never tell anybody outside the family what you're thinking again. Conspiracy is a standalone crime in our country, and you've certainly got enough to present to the grand jury that there's a conspiracy among Joe, Brother James, and Hunter to bring in money, to not declare that money, to not pay taxes on that money, he said. There's nine ways they can go with this thing. And, he said, to do so from a country like China, it's not, it's not just red flags, it's a red flag with a uh, yellow star on it. No, I just made that up. Good night, everybody. It's not just red flags, there are potential crimes being committed. Yeah, no kidding. That's the other thing. You know what I mean? They are a geopolitical foe, right? Geop China is a geopolitical foe. Um, it's one thing if he was doing dirty business with, I don't know, Poland or an ally or... But fuck it. He's compromised. They have dirt on this motherfucker. You don't think Xi Jinping is just sitting there licking his chops? Ay, ay, ay. Couldn't have picked the worst asshole. To you know? Let's get off that into my favorite subject black people who are full of shit. What do you mean, maybe that? Well, you know, BLM people who started the BLM movement. You know what I'm talking about? Black Lives Matter bought a swanky Southern California home for nearly six million using donations. Would you believe three Cub Scouts and a rowboat? Let's get smart, everybody. I hope you're 70. <laughs> Do you remember Get Smart? I don't get smart. Do you? Yeah. Dallas knows. I don't know. I, think, I keep thinking you're my age. <laughs> Anyways, $6 million. They bought a house of BLM people who founded the shithole uh, Marxist organization using donations and cash donation. Gee, I wonder whether that came out on Monday. Uh, three leaders of the social ju justice movement, Patrice O'Neill. What? No, Patrice Colors. <laughs> Look how they spell colors. And you know it meant to be colors. Alicia Garza and Melina Abdullah 
three angry black dykes seen here who couldn't hate this country more because they just, you know, it doesn't cater to their fucking need. Uh, record, they recorded a video last June outside the secretly bought home. Well, I guess it's not really secret. While marking the one-year anniversary of George Floyd, how does that not say it all? What better way to celebrate, first of all, a, a fake hero, but, you know, to them a real hero, by showing the house you bought with the money that you got from him dying? Look what we did with the exploited money. Look what we did. Where's Al Sharpton? He probably managed all that. So they... <laughs> They show the house right out here. Congratulations on your one year. Bye bye, dickhead. Yeah, really. <laughs> Colors at the time said she was weeks removed from being in survival mode. Uh, I think we have her saying that in an interview. And what folks says about this family, I do. I has told you and told you that she can always tell a lady but the way that she eat in front of folks like a bird. And I ain't aiming for you to go to Mr. John Wilkinson's and eat like a field hand and gobble like a hog. <laughs> or any of my other houses. After the Post exclusive reporting in April revealed her purchase of uh, four, she, remember this? We talked about the bought four high end U.S. homes for 3.2 mil. It's because we're powerful. This is her talking. Because we are winning, colors said of what she characterized as right wing media attack. I love the phrase right wing media attacks. Uh, it's because we are threatening the establishment, we're threatening the white supremacy. <laughs> That doesn't exist. But Colors and her colleagues didn't reveal any details on Upscale Home seen behind them in the video, a 6,500 square foot spread with more than six bedrooms and bathrooms, fireplaces, a pool, and parking for more than 20 cars. <laughs> any room for fucking a statue of George Floyd in the kitchen? According to a real estate listing cited by the magazine. The property was purchased in October 2020 with funds that had been previously donated to BLM Global Network Foundation, according to the explosive report. Yeah, boy, it gets a ton of coverage, doesn't it? The seven-bedroom residents, uh, and nobody makes, nobody, this pisses off nobody more than black people who work hard for a living and, you know, and who believe in the movement and shit, even though they're being <sighs> seven bedrooms, huh? Uh, anyways, the residence was purchased by a man named, uh, it looks like Diane. Let's say Dane. And that's probably black for Dane, D-Y-A-N-E. Let's call him Diane. <laughs> Diane Pascal, two weeks after BLMGNF received, <laughs> two weeks after, they can't even wait, 66.5 mil from its fiscal sponsor earlier that month. Pascal is the financial manager for Janiah and Patrice Consulting. I used them when I got in a slip and fall thing at the market. An LLC operated by Colors and her spouse, Gianna Khan. New York Magazine. Look how happy they are to be in America. Huh? Ownership was then transferred within a week to an LLC in Delaware, ensuring the property's owner wouldn't be disclosed, according to the report. I have one thing to say to you, Ms. Colors. You fucking whore. That's right. Yeah, that's it. Go home. Get my dinner ready. <laughs> Oh, my God, I just love Christopher and his retro fucking sexes. <laughs> That's right, go home and get my dick. You know, I've used that on my wife when we get in fights when we're out. No, I would never. No, I can't do that. Only during Lent. What? <laughs> Colors, uh, BLM's co-founder resigned in May. Oh, did she? She probably, <laughs> she on the LGBT, the ladies golf tour, if I could get that out. The caffeine is just overwhelming right now. Resigned in May as the group's executive director amid criticism over buying three homes in the L.A. area and another outside Atlanta. Jesus Christ. The purchase of the nearly $6 million home had not been previously reported. And of course not. And BLM officials tried to keep its existence a secret from a journalist looking into the transaction, according to the report. Oh, is this her? There's a little clip of our girl. Let's see what up with this, yo. Apparently, Marxists even want to live in posh LA neighborhoods. Yeah. As protests broke out across the US in the name of Black Lives Matter Look movement, the dumb the group's co-founder, Patrice Coolers, went on a real estate shopping spree, purchasing about four or five properties worth well over $3 million. <laughs> Most recently, she dropped $1.4 million on a mini compound in LA's Topanga Canyon sweetie. area, just a short drive from Malibu. <laughs> Part of me kind of admires her. Because I'm not even smart enough to know how to do that. 
set up an LLC. I just can't. This is all I can do, folks. I can cook like a bitch. I can be funny at times. And I look good naked, I was told, by my uh, neighbor. <laughs> I was using a leaf blower, bare ass, the other day. and She got a glimpse. She said, what's that tiny thing between your legs? I said, mind your fucking business. I come over there and whack you. <laughs> I'm making Dallas nervous right now. He's like, what the fuck? That's I'm not going outside. It's just a goat. Mom, it's a fucking goat. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to bite her. <laughs> I want to bite her little face off. Oh, God. Hey, apparently the Navy, the United States Navy, is seeing UFOs every time they go for a ride. I don't know how else to put that. U.S. Navy warship was shadowed by two car-sized balls. <laughs> Cars? <laughs> car-sized? I mean, what kind, of, what kind of description is that? Well, okay, were they Priuses or were they Escalade? I mean, this could be a shot from Battleship, the game. G7, miss, was shadowed by two car-sized balls of light. Oh, I, I made two girls nervous jogging by my house today. You know how, like... Sometimes cute college girls jog by. I said, uh, I yelled out, there was two of them today. I yelled out to the freshman, I go, hey, you watch the ID network? You better. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, there was uh, two girls running like 10 minutes later. I said, girls, they're like, why? Well, I go, uh, do you know if Home Depot carries bone saws? <laughs> <laughs> they think I'm, I never which is stupid on my part. <laughs> I pay him to run by. Anyways, balls of light. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Back to the girls. <laughs> balls of light that were uh, unaffected by anti-drone weapons. Did you really think an anti-drone weapon is going to work on something that's from another galaxy? <laughs> the fuck? You think they're buying this shit at Best Buy like you are? <laughs> but that would put a, a little fucking... Uh, did I say this about Miss Colors? You fat, nasty, black bitch. <laughs> you did now. Never too late. Anyways, uh, McHale's Navy shit their pants when they sell these balls. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. No, Will Robinson. Danger. Documentary filmmaker Dave C. Beatty, Beatty, who produced 2019 film The Nimitz Encounters, which I even know The Nimitz is a ship, uh, about the famous 2004 U.S. Navy encounter with the Tic Tac object revealed uh, the reported sighting from October of 2021. If you guys, to refresh your memory, this was kind of where they saw this in the sky. The film reveals no control services, no exhaust plume, a uniform heat signature, and no visible means of propulsion. Gary and his shipmates saw the flare film on their consoles. It does the same thing as my um, <laughs> air fryer. <laughs> no visible exhaust. No. <laughs> At least two objects are said to have lurked near the 40,500 ton. You guys realize a ton is 2,000 pounds times 40,500. Imagine that falling on your chest when you're changing its tire. It's a boat. <laughs> uh, amphibious assault ship. Why amphibious? What does that mean? You know. I was Army. I was Army. I know. <laughs> I, was, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Don't you guys have amphibious shit in the Army? I thought amphibious meant it went on land and... Uh, anyways, amphibious assault ship uh, for several nights while it was on training exercises off the east coast of the United States. The phenomena, described by sources familiar with the encounter as odd and menacing balls of light, are said to have been following around a half mile behind the ship and about... 200 feet above the ocean. I would have been out of there. I would have fucking jumped in and swam to wherever. Look at that. It looks like a... First of all, that's not an actual picture. This is a marked up thing, but it looks like two beautiful moons. That would scare you, too. Uh, Beatty was contacted by a now-retired U.S. Marine officer, identified only as Mark regarding this strange episode. He called him. And, is this moron number one? Yeah. Put more on number two on the phone. <laughs> the USS Kearsarge had been training at the time ahead of an overseas deployment, including with systems designed to take down enemy drones. The weapons included anti-drone Ghostbusters. It's always good when your military equipment's named after a D-movie. And that's all it was. 
uh, in my opinion, people like uh, Ghostbusters-style backpacks and systems mounted on vehicles. It's understood that the incident was recorded on video by the crew, but this footage has not yet been released, so why the fuck should I believe any of it? Marines on board are said to have believed at first the unexplained objects were part of a surprise training exercise for the new anti-drone weapons. However, they discovered the countermeasures did not disrupt the objects, which were doing swooping maneuvers as they followed the ship. Mark told Beatty that the USS Kersage radio command about the objects and were informed the objects were not ours. That That's like getting a call. It's, it's coming from inside the house, the call. That's sort of... That's sort of you know what I'm saying? The documentarian is attempting a deeper dive into the event, which is the latest UFO incident reported to have been encountered by the United States Navy. Maybe they're all drinking really heavy and just seeing shit. That would be, you know, I'm making light of it, but that would put a chill up your ass. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. shit. And you got to believe, folks, I'm not one of these... I've always been saying, hey, until I come downstairs and there's one of them at my breakfast table having coffee with me, I don't believe in any of this shit. But lately, there's been some weird shit out there. Just don't come to my house. By the way, congratulations to the Kansas Jayhawks. Down by 50. You know I hate basketball, but I do March Madness. It does get good, the final four. Uh, down by 15 at halftime to North Carolina. And you know what I did? I, what do I do? I taped the whole game, but I fast forward to the second half. Watched the second half. Enjoyed all the shit you guys did. Didn't bore myself with the first 40 baskets. Or all the woke commercials. All the woke commercials. I know I'm bad, and I'm white, and I have a penis. <laughs> and I'm Christian, and you want me out of here. I ain't going nowhere. It's a dangerous situation. Biden doubles down, next story, on Putin being a war criminal. Wow, Joe Biden. You're a really fucking edgy guy. I was just reading. We can't talk. We can't show bodies on the show. All the, D Dallas had to go back and edit the shit we showed. Yes, you can't show. You know, you can't show any. What the fuck? It's slowly happening. Um, yeah, God forbid you let the world know what's really going on. They, but I read in the story I can talk about. They're finding girls as young as 10 who are raped. They have, like, anal tearage. Think about the, you know, drunken Russian psycho fucks, tortured people dead, burning swastika. They have this Nazi. That was the excuse or the lie that Putin used to his military that Ukraine was being taken over by Nazis. And of course, like any armies, a bunch of dummies believe it. Some of them don't. But they're burning swastikas into people, like after they're dead or before they're dead. They find their bodies with, and, and, and raped. 10-year-old girl, I mean, you got to be, this is war, but there are no rules. It shouldn't shock you, because we've been through it on this planet before. It's just a fucking, you'd think in 2022, like I said, Putin's in another time, in another, Russia, and what are we doing about it? And, and look, I know it's a hard, it really is a hard decision. I mean, I know these are Trump, but as soon as Soon as this is a proxy war, anyways, we're given all the equipment. But soon as we do something, um, you know, it's on. And and I think Putin knew that being a great chess player. Well, how do you know that? Well, he's Russian, um, but he knew. He knows. He's like, call my, you know, he's calling our bluff. He's like, go ahead, make a fucking move, and he's using that. He has been for two months now. Russian leader. Vladimir Putin faced mounting global condemnation. Really? What did Canada get involved? Uh, Monday with President Biden and a growing number of world leaders calling for a war crimes trial uh, following the discovery in Ukraine of mass graves and street, streets littered with bodies of civilians around the uh, suburbs of uh, Kiev. Who's an animal? Putin. Your mother's an animal, you son of a bitch. Oh. But you see, what is it, the ICC, the International uh, b -b Court, whatever the fuck, they're not part of it. They never pretended to be part of it, Russia. So they, you can do all that shit you want. They're not going to play. You're going to have to go get them and hang them. It's like expecting a... I can't hear you. It's, Real like, a, it's like expecting Islamic terrorists to abide by the Geneva yeah. Convention. Yeah. No, exactly. Why would you think? This is what I'm saying. That's why I laugh at the UN and shit. 
But like you said, yeah, the jihadis, you think they really give a fuck about your rules? And Oh, no. They blow themselves up. You think they give a shit if you... The guy is brutal. This is Joe Biden talking. I don't know who handed him this dribble. The guy is brutal, and what's happening is Bucha is outrageous, Biden told reporters, referring to a town near Kiev, where numerous civilians were found dead, some bearing marks of torture or execution. The Ukrainian government said it has counted more than 400 civilian deaths so far in the suburbs of the capital city. Well, whose fault is that? I don't know. A lot of countries. Biden previously branded Putin a war criminal in remarks on March 17th, but at the time, the White House said he was speaking, remember they had to walk it back, personally and not outlining a formal U.S. position. Six days later, the U.S. formally accused Russia of war crimes and said it was collecting evidence to uh, help prove it. Here is Dinkweed yesterday um, taking a piss in a field, and they caught him on camera because his prostate is rotten like a melon. Uh, let's listen to dummy. This warrants him, he is a war criminal. But we have to gather the information. We have to continue to provide Ukraine with the weapons they need to continue the fight. And we have to gather all the detail. Did I, did I, uh, did I not give you the very beginning when he comes off and he goes, I said he was a war criminal. I didn't, right? Fuck. Because that, that maybe it was a different speech yesterday. He goes, remember when I said he was, that's like a little kid. I was right. That's what he was worried about. I think it might have been that one. I don't know. Um, yeah, he gets off and goes, eh, I was right, remember? Fuck. <laughs> Zelensky has described the scenes in Bucha where photos and videos show mass graves and dead men and women face down on residential roads as evidence of Russian genocide against Ukrainians. More than 300 were killed, he said. Ordinary residents, he says, of an ordinary city near Kiev, Zelensky said in an address to the uh, Romanian parliament. Their hands were tied behind their backs. They were shot in the back of the head or in the eye, killed just in the streets. Civilian vehicles were crushed by military equipment, v vehicles with people in them. They raped women and girls, which... They're raping me! This right. is rape! This We're is right. rape! This is rape! Zelensky also warned that the most brutal images from newly liberated areas such as Bucha and uh, Borodyanka were still to come, which he's probably right. Fucking Biden. What did I tell you? Who gives a fuck what you think? Exactly, you dummy. I'll tell you who gives a fuck what he thinks, the people who are handling him. Don't say a word. We'll take care of it, Joe. Read this. Get out there. All right, that's enough for today. I got to go poo-poo. Anyways, I thought it was a terrific show. I want to thank Ellen DeGeneres for giving me the shirt and her life partner for giving me the hairdo, you know, and her cousin, I mean sister, Diane, for the mustache. What am I saying? I don't know. I don't know, but it makes money. But $11 I claimed doing the show. It's terrific. It's a real moneymaker. Since YouTube kicked me in the balls, I owe them $40. Uh, don't forget to sign up. Help me out, please, will you? It's the most honest show on the goddamn internet. I go out. I, I'm, I'm getting on a plane again this weekend. Somebody fucking reward me. I'm watching average people on the internet. They kick a cat in the face and get 70 million viral. What do I got to do? Shoot a penguin? Sounds like a euphemism jerking off. I'm going to shoot the penguin after the show. I'm going to choke the Pope. What? <laughs> Anyways, uh, don't forget to sign up at thecomicsgym.com. Please, monthly. Huh? All right. Don't forget patreon.com. You can do the same thing. I think you can sign up at nickdip.com. I don't even know how it works. But that's where there's also merchandise and my tour dates. Uh, and cameo.com. All of a sudden, I guess you have to advertise. All of a sudden, I'm getting a couple now every day. Uh, if you want me to roast a friend or relative or say happy birthday and roast, whatever. Whatever you want me to do, go to cameo.com. They'll tell you how to do it. That's it, guys. You guys think it, I'll say it. You're very welcome. Uh, we'll see you back here for the same, um, same type of show, I guess. I don't know what I was saying. I really talked myself into a corner, didn't I?